Hey everyone, this is Dan with Data Trend. Today is Thursday, March 24th, 2016. It's about 2.30 p.m. or so Mountain Time. The market's closed a half hour ago. And we had a little bit of a down week here this week. Um, tomorrow the market's closed. It's a, a holiday, so this is the end of the week. This is essentially the same as the Friday night video, but we had the S&P 500 index closing the week at 2035.94. On the day, it was down less than a point and basically unchanged again. Um, overall, on the week, I think that the percentage change in here, we're looking at a weekly chart here, the weekly candle, um, I think we were off about negative 0.67%, 0.67% on the week. So it, it was a slight down week, but it wasn't really anything to get too excited about on the downside. Uh, the reason I wanted to start out here on the weekly chart is just to give ourselves a little bit more perspective as we as we look back through what happened. Uh, so we had, of course, this big move off of the lows here down from around 1810, and we topped out somewhere in the neighborhood of the 2050s, 2055, maybe something like that. And from there, we've pulled back just a little bit, and the market kind of came up and it touched this declining trend line. It's it's sitting pretty well and above this uh, the 40-week simple moving average and also the 10-week simple moving average. So those correspond roughly with the 200-day and then also the 50-day. The the 10 week simple moving average is actually starting to turn up here and the market is closed again for the second week in a row up and above this 40 week or the 200 day simple moving average. So that is somewhat constructive. You know, at the same time on the longer term time frame, we see this pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And for at least, you know, at least for now, that hasn't been violated. Um, a higher high, of course, would need to, you know, get up and above somewhere at least on a uh, up and above this 2083 level, maybe even more around the 21. 10 level, something like that, to create a higher high on the weekly time frame, and we haven't seen that just yet. Um, and we have seen a pattern of lower lows. So I think going forward here, when we look at this weekly time frame, a level, of course, that's going to be interesting and important to watch is kind of right in the neighborhood of this 2000. And actually, if we drop down here to the daily time frame, you can see sort of some of the reasons that 2000 could become somewhat, somewhat in play or somewhat pivotal going uh, forward. So you can see that the 2000 level here acted as support back in December and then, you know, acted as a tiny bit of resistance here. And that's not really to be, you know, it's not super surprising. 2000 is an even number and people tend to think about the market in terms of even numbers and place orders around those even numbers. You know, now that we've been in this uptrend, we have the rising 20 day simple moving average coming into that neighborhood. The 200 day is right in that neighborhood as well now, which is starting to level out ever so slightly. I mean, it's still still declining, but not with the same force that it was before. We have the 50 day simple moving average that's actually starting to turn higher at this point. Um, but the market, if, if anything, you know, when we look at it on this longer term time frame, really looks like it's been in a very large period of chops since about 2014. I guess this is going back April of 2014 or so. You know, we could say essentially since that time, the market's really mostly moved sideways. Um, and it's, it's deviated from the mean in here, but it's, it's generally come back to, to live somewhere in this low 2000-ish area. You know, you can see that it traded above there and it traded below it, but it seems to be coming back and around to that level. Um, and for the time being, it seems to be holding up. We, we do have the market here closing below the declining five-day simple moving average, which is a little bit bearish on the shorter term time frame. Um, I think it pushed just up and above the 10-day just barely here at the close. But if we drop down and look at the 65-minute time frame, you can see that it's still holding up in here relatively well. We saw the market gap lower this morning, pull back into that 2025 area. We've been watching this kind of, you know, in the neighborhood of 2020 to 2025. The market did find support there, um, and it started to turn higher and it essentially closed this gap here at the end of the day, but it really didn't. It didn't have a big day at all. I mean, it was, you know, unchanged and sold off and pulled back. So really nothing happened here again. Um, we're still sitting down below this area here around 2040. And if this 2040 area acts as resistance on Monday, Tuesday, something like that, we could maybe see the market come up into there, find some resistance and push lower. At the same time, it could also push up and above there. And if the market was to really get up and above this 25 level, uh, 2055 level or so, it seems like it could certainly catch some people off guard and squeeze it higher. Um, it does seem like the the sentiment that you've seen online and you see on Twitter and you see everywhere else is really quite bearish right now. And everybody's saying, oh, the market's coming into resistance here. The bull market is is over, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, most of you who follow my site know that, you know, the majority of the time I'm relatively bearish, but it is always concerning when other people are being so negative about the market because sometimes that's when it likes to surprise us. And I'm not saying that it will happen, but it's just something to be aware of. 
So let's hop over and take a look at the CIB. We'll just real quickly take a look here on the daily chart. The expiration break evens for the position as they sit right now are in the neighborhood of 2055 on the upside and down around 1960 on the downside. So let's hop over and take a look. So as the position sits at the close today, we had the market here at 2035.94. The delta on the trade's negative 7.57. Gamma is negative 0.06. There's about $22 of theta, negative 81 vega, and the open profit on the trade as it sits right now is about $124. Um, if we were to have a big gap open on Monday morning, we'd basically give up that and we'd be sitting in a, an open loss maybe in the neighborhood of negative $35. If we were to gap lower 3% or so, we take us all the way down to 1974, and in addition to violating that 2000 level, uh, but we'd be sitting with an open profit at that level of somewhere in the neighborhood of 286 or so. So there wouldn't be too much reason for concern on a, you know, even a somewhat significant gap lower on on Monday. This trade is getting relatively close to expiration now. Uh, let's take a look here. So we're at 36 days to expiration. And, uh, you know, so the T plus zero line is going to start to rise faster. Gamma is going to become a greater factor in this position. And we're going to need to keep an eye on it a little bit more closely. What, what I'd like to see happen next week is to have a deeper pullback. If we really could get something down into the neighborhood of that 2000 level, it would be great. Um, certainly, we can't make that happen or predict that it will happen. But if we were to do that, we'd have a greater open profit on the trade and we'd have some, some more opportunities for adjustments. One of the things that I was looking at here was a reverse Harvey on this position, and I, I chose not to do this today um, just because I wanted to let a little bit more profit build up in the trade, and I, I feel comfortable with this short delta amount given the days to expiration and, and how fast the T plus zero line can rise right now. Um, but one of the things I was looking at is taking off this 2080 and rolling it down to 2075 and then also taking the 1930 down here, the lower put, and moving it up to 1935. And so if you were to do that at the close, you know, it says we could get that for a 245 credit, then we'd be in a situation like this. Let's see if we can move this down here. But our, our, our delta would come down slightly, but we would, you know, we'd have a little bit more protection on the upside. And so the reason to wait and see if we could get a little bit bigger credit for this and, and protect the position a little bit more is that we'll have even more upside protection. So for example, say if we were to have waited a little bit longer and we could sell this for a $3 credit, for example, well then we're in a situation where we have even more protection on the upside up and above the recent highs around 2055 and all the way up to 2060 or so. So it just gives us more flexibility and more room. And, and this trade, this Condor that I have priced out here for the reverse Harvey was trading around 275 or so this morning, uh, 275 to 280-ish, something like that. And so putting in the price of three isn't totally unreasonable. Um, it was trading a lot more, maybe in the neighborhood of 265. So it would have needed a little bit bigger pullback, you know, down into the 2010-ish area to get this $3 credit on it probably. And, and we didn't quite see that today. Um, but let's go ahead and jump back over to the charts for a moment. I just wanted to mention briefly something about RUD as well because I trade RUD and I'm sure many of you do as well. So the Russell 2000, this is the weekly chart here. The market closed the day at 1079.53. It was up, in fact, 3.83 points, 0.36%. Um, I'm having trouble talking today. Uh, on the week, it was down, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2% or so. So you can see that even though we've had this really big <clears throat> move up higher from around the down, around the 940, 943 level up into 1100, essentially, the market still looks relatively damaged here on the longer term time frames. You know, it's still well below the declining 40-week simple moving average. It is above the 10-week. Um, but at the same time, it hasn't rallied back up to even touch this trend line that's you know, coming down the declining highs from 2015. And so the market looks kind of like it's hanging around in here, sort of around this 1080, 1075 level, which we can see has acted as support for a while, trying to decide what to do, essentially. Um, going forward, I think that this level here in the Russell 2000 down around 1040 could end up being fairly significant. You know, we've seen the market find support there on a short-term basis a couple of times. It came down, it blasted through that, it acted as resistance here back in January and February of this year. 
and sold off from there and it came back up. So if the market was to pull back into this level and find a little bit of support somewhere there or even slightly in front of it, maybe you can make the case that we're going to move a little bit higher. If, it, if the market does come down here to this 1040 level and it, it breaks through there again, I think it's very likely that the market is going to come down here to test these lower lows somewhere in the neighborhood 960 to 940-ish um, and certainly would have the potential to move lower at that point as well. On the daily time frame, the, the Russell really looks more neutral than anything in here, at least in the short term. Uh, the market kind of turned around and pulled back after making this new high earlier in the week, or maybe that was actually late last week. Um, and then on the 65 minute time frame, we see the same thing. We have the five day simple moving average and the 10 day, and they're just kind of chopping around and crossing over each other and things like that. And so the market seems like it's turning relatively sideways in here. And if you compare that to SPX on the 65 minute time frame, it sort of looks like SPX might be setting up for some similar type of action where it's just moving sideways. Uh, since it's Friday, I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys something a little bit different. Or I guess it's Thursday, but it's Friday for all uh, market purposes. We're going to hop over here and I just want to show you a position in rut. So this trade is a broken wing butterfly that's been open for a while. It's been open since <coughs> late February. Um, and we're going to open up right. And this trade started back on, I believe, February 26th or so. And it's been various broken wing butterflies over the life of the trade, but it's essentially just been moved forward or moved higher as the market's moved higher. Um, and it's never really taken a significant drawdown. It's been down money at various points in the trade and things like that. Um, but now the position is getting relatively close to expiration and it's it's starting to come into the money a little bit and let's see here we're still on SPX let's switch over to right and then we'll get the right deltas so this trade is in the April 5 16 options it has 36 days to expiration <coughs> and there are various butterflies in here and also some short verticals as well that have been used to flatten out the the delta but this is what the trade looks like as it sits right now so you have the market here at 1079.54 has a delta of negative five essentially gamma negative 0.09 theta is about fifteen dollars a day so there's a nice uh, delta theta ratio here so you have about uh, one to three or so approximately the open profit on the trade at the close here is about 98 99 dollars but it has a nice range of profit as well from up in the neighborhood of about 1100 or so all the way down to 1020 um, and so for those of you who follow the position spreadsheet you've been seeing some of these orders show up on there and it's really easy to to uh, to find those trades if you just go to the Theta Trend blog. Let's see here if we can we can navigate there. In fact, if we just go to the Theta Trend blog and we go to the results tab. I'll let this load here for a minute. Uh, down here, there's this Google spreadsheet, and you can click this link, and it'll open it up here in a new window. And from there, you can come down and you can see a list of all of these orders for the open positions. So you have the uh, the broken wing butterfly. This is the one we're looking at right now. The one in right with 63 days to expiration. I don't know what happened there. Um, but if you wanted to kind of backtrack through some of these orders, you could do that and you could see what took place on what days and things like that. So it's just something to uh, take a peek at. And just for future reference as well, this is sort of how the trades are starting out because we're going to start trading a few more of these broken wing butterflies and I might as well show you some of them right now. This is a trade that I just opened up yesterday in SPX and so this is a SPX broken wing butterfly. It is the 1940-1995-2040 and this is a June 1 weeklies and so I think that was in the neighborhood of yeah, I had 72 days to expiration yesterday, so I had 71 days to expiration today. And so as you can see right here, so the market's here at 2035. The delta is negative 0.67. The gamma is negative 0.02. About $3.62 of theta has an open loss of $5, so pretty negligible. Um, but the positions start out with a relatively wide range of profit, and so there's a lot of room for the market to move here, and there's there's no gamma, so it really doesn't take much pain. If you jump out forward, like we'll say we day step this out to about Friday of next week, so you know Friday of next week we have a range of profit from about 2060 down to 1960. That's all right. If if the market moves up here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adjusting it on the upside. We're going to be trying to 
to essentially raise this wing and then move this pocket of decay up with the market as well. So at any rate, that's, that's sort of a preview of things to come. I thought you guys might enjoy that a little bit. But that's all I have for tonight. Have a good long weekend. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, info at thetatrend.com. And thanks for watching.